This is Wizard Grandpa's Stories. <laughs> Nice to see you. Welcome to Wizard Grandpa's Stories. Today, I would like to tell you the story of the magic snuff box. Now, once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. And he lived with his parents in a hut in the forest. His father was a woodcutter. And his mother was busy cooking and making clothes for them. One day, Jack said to his mother, Mother, I really think I should go and make my own way in the world. I've been here long enough now. It's time for me to explore. His mother said, Very well, Jack. If you must go, you must go. And she gave him a big piece of bread and an even bigger piece of cake and put them in a satchel for him, and he set off, waving goodbye. On the way, he saw his father cutting down trees. Father, it's time for me to go and explore the world and find my own way. Very well, son, said his father. You must do what you must do. But here, take this with you. And his father gave him a golden snuff box. My father gave it to me. His father gave it to him. His father gave it to him. And his father gave it to him as far back as anyone can remember. This snuff box is very special. And you must only open it if you are in fear of death. Take it and take my blessing with you, my son. May all good fortune go with you. So Jack waved goodbye to his father and set off down the path. He travelled on and on, through fields, through forests, over hills and down dales, across rivers and streams, for day after day. And finally he came upon a big house, a very big house, clearly the house of a rich gentleman, and he knocked on the back door, and one of the servants opened the back door and said, What do you want, young man? Oh, forgive me, I am travelling by, and just wondered if you might have a drop for me to drink or a bite for me to eat. So the servant lady invited him into the kitchen, and he sat there, eating and drinking quietly. And while he was eating and drinking, a beautiful girl came into the room. She was the daughter of the owner of the house. And she sat there and chatted to Jack and liked him very much. And then she ran upstairs to her father's office and said, Father, there is such a nice young man in the kitchen. You really ought to meet him. I like him very much. Well, her father doted on her and would do anything to please her. So he called for Jack to be brought up to his office. Jack came into the office very nervously and bowed to the gentleman. My lord, he said, thank you for your hospitality. Well, you look like a fine young man, said the gentleman. Tell me, what do you do? Oh. Well, I, I can do anything. Anything? Oh, yes, yes, said Jack. I, I can do anything you would like me to. Now, of course, what Jack meant was, I can do anything around the house, like cooking or tidying or cleaning, or anything in the garden, like planting trees or cutting wood, that kind of anything. But the gentleman understood something different. You can do anything? Very well. I shall set you a task. 
If you fail in this task, I shall have you put to death. And the task is this. By eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I would like to see a lake out there on the meadow. And in that lake, I would like to see a man of war, a great sailing ship with three tall masts and rows and rows of guns down each side. And when the guns fire at eight o'clock, the guns shall fire so loudly that they break one of the legs of the bed my daughter Maria is sleeping in. Can you do this? Jack was astonished to be asked to do such a thing. Uh, uh, no, uh, can you do this? Uh, yes, you, my lord, I'm sure I will try. Very well, said the gentleman. You have till eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Jack was shown to a guest bedroom and he went to sleep thinking this would be his last night on earth. He woke up the next morning just a few minutes before eight o'clock and he remembered that the great Lord had told him he would be put to death if he failed in this task. And then he remembered his father's gift to him and he put his hand in his pocket and took out the snuff box. Small, shiny little box. And he remembered his father saying, only open it if you are in danger of death. Well, said the young man, it's now or never. So he opened the snuff box. And out jumped three little men, all dressed in red. They stood on the table they bowed and said, Yes, master, what is your will? Jack was amazed and astonished. Three little men jumping out of the snuff box. So he said to them, Well, um, this is rather a big task, and I don't know if you can do it, but by eight o'clock, I would like to see a lake in the meadow, and in that lake, a huge man of war with three masts and rows and rows of guns down each side. And when the guns fire at eight o'clock, they should fire so loudly that they break one of the legs on the bed in which the gentleman's daughter is sleeping. Yes, master, said the three little men, and they hopped out of the window and were gone. Well, Jack didn't hold much hope, but he looked out of the window and over in the meadow, he could already see the water rising over the grass. And in no time at all, a great big ship was floating on the water, a tall three-mastered man of war. And down each side were rows and rows of guns. And just as the clock struck eight o'clock, the guns fired. And there was such a bang that one of the legs broke on the bed in which Maria was sleeping. Jack could not believe his luck. The three little men had done what they were supposed to do. Well, Jack went downstairs and the Lord of the manor was there to greet him. And so was Maria. Well, young man, you have shown yourself to be something out of the ordinary, said the gentleman. I wonder if you can do me one more task. And if you succeed in this, I shall give you the hand of my daughter, Maria, in marriage. Uh, yes, your lordship, he said. I will do the best I can. For Maria was very pretty, and he liked her and she liked him. The Lord said to Jack, over there, on top of the hill, you can see a clump of trees. I would like those trees all cut down. And in their place, I would like to see a castle on 12 golden pillars. And at eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I would like to see a squadron of dragoons riding their white horses outside the castle. Do you think you can accomplish this? 
I shall try, sir. I shall indeed try. Well, Jack knew he couldn't do this, but hoped that the three little men in red would be able to. That night he went to bed early and slept all night and woke up just a few minutes before eight o'clock in the morning. Then he remembered the task he had been set. So he took out the snuff box, opened the lid and out jumped three little men, all dressed in red. They stood on the table and bowed to him. Yes, master, they said. What do you desire? Well, said Jack, pointing out of the window. Do you see that clump of trees on top of that hill? I would like you to cut down all of those trees and in their place build a castle on 12 golden pillars. And at eight o'clock I would like to see there a squadron of dragoons on their white horses. That's all. Very well, master, said the three little men in red. Jack looked out of the window and saw the trees on top of the hill disappear as they were chopped down one by one. And in their place there rapidly appeared a castle standing on twelve golden pillars. As the clock struck eight inside the house, a squadron of dragoons on white horses appeared in front of the castle. Jack ran down the stairs. Waiting for him at the bottom was the lord of the manor and his beautiful daughter Maria. Well, 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 young man, said the lord. It looks as though you have achieved what I wanted. Come, let's go and have a look. So the lord of the manor, together with Jack and Maria, strode over the fields to the hill where the castle was and the squadron of dragoons on their white horses. Well, the lord of the manor was very well pleased with the castle. He commended Jack and told her he could marry his daughter Maria. And he sent out a message to call all the lords and ladies in the whole area to come and see his castle. The next day was the day of the gathering. And all the great and the good for miles around came to see this amazing wonder. Jack and Maria were there too, but Jack had changed his clothes. The Lord of the Manor had given him some very nice clothes to wear. For now he was to be his son-in-law, he should dress very well. And Jack had left his old clothes in his bedroom. One of the servants was tidying up the room and he picked up Jack's coat and out fell the snuff box. The servant picked it up and opened it and out jumped the three little men in red. Master, they said, bowing to him, what may we do for you? The servant said to the three little men, take me to the castle on the hill, the one standing on 12 golden pillars, and then take me and the castle to a far distant kingdom where no one will find us. Yes, master, it will be done. And in a flash, the servant found himself inside the castle. And in one more flash, the castle was far away in another country. And where it had been standing, there was a bare and empty field. Well, the Lord of the Manor was furious. He'd called all the people from miles around to see his beautiful new castle, and now it was gone. What is the meaning of this? he said to Jack. Sir, I, I know not. I have no idea. You will not marry my daughter, Maria. You will be lucky to escape with your life. Sir, sir, give me a chance. Give me a chance to find the castle and bring it back, for I would dearly love to marry Maria. The Lord looked at him and said, If you can return the castle to me within a year and a day, then you may marry Maria. But if you cannot bring it back in a year and a day, never come here again. 
he gave Jack one of his horses. So Jack rode across the countryside. He rode for week after week, for month after month, hunting everywhere, asking everyone he met, have you seen a castle on 12 golden pillars? But no one had. He traveled for month after month all over the world and no one could tell him anything. But then one day he came to a palace. He'd never seen anything like it before, but he decided to ask inside the palace. It was the palace of the king of the mice. Standing at the front entrance of the palace was a mouse in armor, the guard mouse. Halt, said the mouse. What do you want? I, I, I would like a word with the king of the mice, if I may, asked Jack. Wait there, said the guard mouse. And he called another mouse and asked him to take the message to the king of the mice. And another message came back saying Jack could be admitted. And Jack went to talk to the king of the mice and told him his dilemma, how the castle on 12 golden pillars had been stolen and he was trying to find it again. The king of the mice was a kind creature and wanted to help. So he said to Jack, tomorrow I will call all the mice in the world and I will ask them all if they have seen your castle. True to his word, the king of the mice called all of the mice in the world. And the next day they assembled in the courtyard of the palace. And the king of the mice called to them. My people, have any of you seen a castle on 12 golden pillars? There was silence in the courtyard. Not one of the mice had seen it anywhere. Jack was disappointed. But the king of the mice tried to comfort him and he said, my friend, I have two brothers. One is the king of all the frogs and the other is the king of all the birds. I commend you to go to them for either the frogs or the birds may have seen your castle. So the king of the mice gave a piece of cake for Jack to take to the king of the frogs. And he kept Jack's horse, which was very tired. And he gave him a horse, a fresh horse, and told him how to get to the palace of his brother, the king of all the frogs. Jack traveled across the countryside until he came to that palace. And in front, there was a guard frog dressed in armor. Halt, said the guard frog. What do you want? I've come to speak to the king of all the frogs. His brother, the king of all the mice, has sent me. Very well, said the guard frog. Wait there. And he called another frog and sent him as a messenger to the king. And the message came back to allow Jack to enter. Jack was received graciously by the king of all the frogs. And he explained to him how he was looking for a castle on 12 golden pillars. Hmm, said the king of all the frogs. I have heard nothing of the kind, but tomorrow I will call all the frogs in the world to come here and we will ask them if they have seen it. And so it came to pass. The next day, all the frogs in the world gathered in the courtyard and the king of all the frogs called out have any of you seen a palace on 12 golden pillars? And there was silence. Not one frog replied. Well, my friend, said the king of all the frogs to Jack, I'm sorry, but we cannot help you. All that remains is for you now to go to my brother, the king of all the birds. He may be able to help you. Here, 
I will give you a piece of cake so that my brother knows you have come from me. And let us change horses, for yours is very tired. So the king of all the frogs kept the horse which his brother had sent Jack on and gave Jack a new fresh horse and told him how to get to the palace of his brother, the king of all the birds. Jack set off and rode a long, long way, but finally he arrived. Standing outside was a little sparrow dressed in armour. And he said, Halt! What do you want? I have come from the king of all the frogs with a message for his brother, the king of all the birds. Wait there, said the sparrow, and he called another bird to go and speak to the king. And the king of all the birds sent a message back to admit Jack. Jack took his piece of cake and gave it to the king of the birds and told him his story and asked him if he had seen a castle on twelve golden pillars. And the king of all the birds said, No, no, Jack, I'm afraid I cannot help you. But tomorrow we will call all the birds in the world and ask them if they have seen it. And that's what he did. The next day, all the birds in the world were gathered in the courtyard of the palace. But one was not there yet. Where is he? called out the king of all the birds. Where is the great bird? Sir, he is coming, he is coming, cried all the other birds. And then, high in the sky, the great bird could be seen. A huge eagle, the biggest eagle in all the world, flew down and into the courtyard. He towered above all the other birds. And then the king of all the birds made his announcement. Dear friends, I have called you all here to ask you if any of you have seen a castle on twelve golden pillars. There was silence for a moment, and then the great bird, the biggest of all the eagles, called out, Yes, your highness, I have seen it. Well, you can imagine Jack's joy. The great bird was called into the castle, and the king of all the birds and Jack spoke to him. Yes, your royal highness, said the great bird. I have seen a castle on twelve golden pillars. It is in the far, far north of here, standing on its own in an island. And the king of all the birds said to the great bird, Can you take our friend Jack to that castle? For he wishes to bring it back. It belongs to him. The great bird said, I can take him there but I don't know how it can be brought back. I may be the great bird, but I'm not great enough to carry a castle. Jack said to the great bird, do not worry, my friend, we will find a way, but please just take me there. The next day, the great bird, the biggest eagle in all the world, set off with Jack on his back. They flew to the far north. And while they were flying, Jack felt something moving in his pocket. He put his hand into his left pocket and there was a mouse. Little mouse, what are you doing in my pocket? Oh, sir, when you came to the palace of the king of all the mice, I thought I would like an adventure. So I climbed into your pocket. Well, little mouse, you're very welcome, said Jack. I don't know if this is the kind of adventure you had wanted, but you're welcome to travel with us. And he put him back in his pocket. And then he felt something wriggling in his other pocket. He put his hand inside and pulled out a frog. Well, hello, little frog. What are you doing there? Well... You came to the palace of the king of the frogs. And while you were there, I thought, 
This could be a way for me to have an adventure. So I climbed inside your pocket. I hope you don't mind. No, said Jack. I don't mind. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoy the adventure. And he carefully put him back in his pocket. The great bird continued on his journey. And soon they saw an island in the far north. And on that island stood the castle on twelve golden pillars. Don't go too near, said Jack. The eagle flew down to the ground and hid behind a tree. So, said the great bird, what are you going to do now? I have an idea, said Jack. He put his hand in his pocket and out came the mouse. A little mouse, now is the time for you to have your great adventure. I'd like you to help me with something. I want you to creep inside that castle and I want you to find my snuff box. It's a small, square little box, silver in colour. Try and find it for me and bring it back. The mouse was very keen to help. Oh yes, yes, I will certainly do that. So Jack put him on the ground and he scampered towards the castle. Jack and his friends waited just a little while and then Jack saw the mouse running back again and he was carrying a little square snuff box. Oh, marvellous, said Jack. Thank you so much, thank you so much. And he put the mouse back in his pocket and took the snuff box in his hand. He climbed onto the back of the eagle once more. In one pocket was the mouse, in the other pocket was the frog, and in his hand was the snuff box. Let us go, he said to the eagle. It's time to go back. So the eagle took to the sky and flew across the sea once more. Jack took out the snuff box and looked at it eagerly. But while he was looking, it slipped from his hand, fell down all the way to the sea. Splash! Oh no, said Jack, what have I done? The frog called out, This is a job for me, master. Let me find it. So the eagle swooped down to the sea level and the frog jumped into the sea. Down, down, down he swam and then up, up, up he swam with the snuff box. Jack picked him up, gratefully put the frog in his pocket once more and the snuff box inside his shirt. And they flew back to the palace of the king of the birds. There the great bird left them, and Jack took his horse once more from the king of all the birds. He rode and he rode till he arrived at the palace of the king of all the frogs. And there he left the frog who'd helped him so well. And he changed horses and rode and rode till he came to the palace of the king of all the mice. And there he left his friendly little mouse who'd retrieved the snuff box for him. And there he changed horses once again. And he rode and he rode and he rode till he finally came back to the house where Maria lived. Inside the house, the lord of the manor was talking to Maria. That's Jack. He made a fool of me. And he made a fool of you too, daughter. We will never see him again. And if we do, I will have his head chopped off. Just then, Jack came into the house. You, said the lord of the manor, you are to be executed. No, no, sir, not me. I have done as you asked. Today is exactly one year and one day since I set off on my travels, trying to find the castle on twelve golden pillars. Well, said the Lord, where is it? Just close your eyes and it will be here. The Lord closed his eyes. Maria closed her eyes. Jack took out the snuff box, went over to a corner, opened it, and out jumped the three little men in red. 
What may we do for you, master? They said, bowing. And he said, Bring back the castle on twelve golden pillars and put it back onto the hill where you built it. Very well, master, they said, bowing once more. They leapt out of the window. And Jack said to the Lord and to Maria, Now look out of the window. And as they looked, the castle on twelve golden pillars reappeared, back where it had been originally. Well, the Lord was happy at last, and proud indeed of his wonderful castle. And he allowed Jack to marry his daughter. They lived happily ever after, and when the Lord of the manor died, well, Jack took it over for himself. And as for the snuff box, well, he hid it in a very safe place. And he never told anyone where it is. And if you can find it, well, then you will be very, very lucky indeed. And that is the story of the magic snuff box. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming to Wizard Grandpa Stories. If you liked my story, then don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And come back soon and bring all your friends with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye.